This week, a man who played front row in the NRL has opened one of the most influential, successful yoga studios in Sydney. He's here to talk with me, Ben Lucas. How are you, mate? Thank you so much for having me. Let's work out how a front row in the NRL opens up a yoga studio. Welcome to the Body Science Podcast, bringing you everything you need, want, and should know about health, fitness, nutrition, and training. As always, the information contained in this podcast is for the information purposes only and is not designed to diagnose or be prescriptive to treat, prevent, or manage any injury, disease, or other health-related condition. Today's podcast is brought to you by BCEAA Ultra, our new all-in-one BCAA and DAA elite amino formula. This cutting-edge formula provides you with the building blocks for lean muscle gain and helps you work through even the most brutal training session. Not just a BCAA supplement, BCEAA Ultra delivers a full spectrum of essential amino acids in effective doses and is 100% vegan friendly. With a massive 5 grams of BCAAs and 7 grams of EAAs plus added L-glutamine, BCEAA Ultra is your weapon for lean muscle repair and maintenance, helping you recover faster from those punishing workouts. Welcome to the home of Fit, Happy and Healthy. And we're going to add in their successful yoga and fitness-based studio driving. Ben Lucas is with me to talk about life and fitness. How are you, mate? I'm amazing, thank you. Great to be up here on the Gold Coast with my beautiful family. Got the call from Body Science. I'm always ready to, to do anything I can for this wonderful brand. Mate, so people who might live under a rock may never have heard of the word Flow Athletic. But And you're one of the first people. To, I mean, you opened up Flow Athletic with the, the, the vision in health and fitness that had taken it to a new level. Like, you introduced yoga and fitness together along with people taking on events and you really changed the way that the traditional fitness industry was and when we're talking what back in 2000 and 2013 13 yeah. you know and and flow athletic has come on to become one of the most well-known yoga studios you know worldwide i'm going to throw out yeah so i had owned gyms since 2009 yeah been in the fitness industry since 97 and I look much younger than that but uh (laughs) and so I was in just personal training initially and then I when I finished playing rugby league I got into running marathons so I was training for an ultra marathon living in North Bondi at the time and I started doing yoga because I know I look like a marathon runner to everyone out there um (laughs) So my body was getting really sore, so I started doing yoga to offset the soreness from the... And that's um, how you got into it. Yeah. and what, then, one of your strategies. And then I met a phenomenal yoga teacher. Her name is Kate Kendall, Australia's best yoga teacher, as I call her. And she would just pack out this kind of... And you got to remember, yoga in, you know, 2000 and seven eight nine wasn't how it is no today it was in very herbal i'll use the word yep type places kind of incense and concrete floor type uh joints and she would just pack this place out every week they had to shut the door and turn people away she was such an incredible teacher and I, i became friends with kate i started doing some some private sessions with her just to really work on my yoga because i wanted to get it she started doing personal training with me okay i found that the yoga really helped my running my sleeping my weight training my everything she found that the weight training really helped all the strength work and the fitness work with me really helped her yoga and then from there we kind of thought hey there might be something here from combining the yoga and fitness in the one building to give our you know, the public an offering to, to feel as good as we do. So that's one thing that we really love about the business, and that's back in 2010, is that it, it comes from a real true place. It, yep. It's from our own story. It wasn't just, hey, how can we make money? Because that wasn't our first idea. It yep. was just about how can we bo- combine two things that we're both really good at and then serve the community in the way that we know well. Nice, man. I love that. And look, you, you touched on you were running marathons at the time, and that's why you were you took up yoga. We should yeah. probably clarify that you've done 40 marathons. I have run 40 marathons. It doesn't feel like that many, but then I go through them and I go, you know, I've done Gold Coast half a dozen times. I've done Sydney half a dozen times. I've done pretty much every one in Australia. I've done New York four times. I've done the Great Wall of China. I've done, yeah. So there was a stage there, uh, probably 2008, 2009, that I was doing almost one a month. 
Just wherever. There was one. Yeah, I, I just really wanted to push myself and see what I had in me. I think also... Was that a mental thing? Like, what was that? Yeah, look, my, 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 my mum had passed not too long before that and I was like, fuck it, how can I hurt myself? But in a positive way, I was yeah. not going to go out and party and take drugs. I'm going to run run marathons instead, you know. So. Mate, that's amazing. Like, And look, you talked about your mum and, and your running and where you're at, but you didn't just take yourself on that journey. You... You, you took a lot of people with you, like you've, and this is where I talk about you being one of the innovators in the industry that we love, one of the true people that have changed the industry, and a lot of us are, are benefiting from the hard yards you did in the early days. And so, one one of the big things in your, oh, you've done five ultra marathons as well. I shouldn't leave that out because that's um, not yeah. something to be not spoken about either. But we'll talk about the marathons. You take runners to marathons. Yeah. So, and, and that's actually one of the most challenging things you could do. So, 2011 was the first big one. We took 101 non-runners or people that had never run a marathon before some people had never run more than 100 meters more to run their very first marathon at the sydney running festival and 101 runners yeah and that that was really challenging more so mentally because every week these people were not only breaking physical barriers but mental barriers Mm. to change the view of themselves that they didn't think they was running i didn't think i could run 5ks i didn't think i could run 10 10K. So the amount of tears that were had over that journey of people, you know, breaking a new threshold they didn't achieve, I think was possible. But really, and this is something I'm super passionate about, is the marathon is kind of a microcosm for your life. And if you can achieve something that you didn't think you could do, well, then what else is is there in your life that it's only your view of you think you can't doing it stopping you so even now what's that almost 10 years on I still get messages from people today saying how much it, that changed their lives back then it changed their family because their relationship with their children that saw them do that with their workmates with their you know the society at large just seeing these people do something incredible and how it changed their life moving forward from there and mate that's a, a, what I love about those you use the word change there a lot and another big change that you took on was you've raised what over a quarter of a million dollars for charity while doing the marathon process yeah 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 Yeah. and 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 just through a number of initiatives through flow athletic like our 30-day challenge and things like that I, you know, I've had a, a blessed life. I grew up one of six kids. We didn't grow up with a lot of like money or anything, but I had support. I had great parents. I had siblings. I had a roof over my head. I had food. So I'm already ahead of most of the planet, yeah. you know, got a healthy body and brain. So I kind of believe it's your duty if you have been blessed with so much to try and contribute and give back to society you know and and we've been fortunate to raise yeah over 250 grand in the journey over 100,000 to beyond blue over 100,000 to children's charities and then and other smaller ones along the way too good is our partner charity at the moment that is for survivors of domestic violence nice so yeah there's so many worthy causes out there but if you are able to i really think you should should give back as much as you can because in the fitness industry over the years i'm lucky to have made friends with and learned off i learned as much off people as they learn off me over the time and it's not the ones with the biggest bank balances are necessarily the most happy but the ones that are contributing to society helping others that are in a better place so for me it isn't about having the most for benny lucas but it's about how can i help others you know that makes me feel good mate that's unreal how was preparing yourself for the NRL when you played for Cronulla compared to preparing yourself for multiple marathons? Look, it's just just the big difference between a, a team sport and an individual sport, I, I think. So I, I loved the camaraderie of of team sports about teammates about trainings about before and after and i think i guess that's kind of one of the main reasons that i've got others into doing the running as well that you can how do you turn an individual sport into a team sport yeah, exactly yeah was you get other people to do it as well yeah you know so that was kind of i took the best things for me out of rugby league which is the the friendships and the camaraderie and rolled that into marathon running and mate you've uh, you've obviously set your businesses up in uh, Paddington in Chook 
your country or have you changed teams? No, I haven't. The uh, 2016 grand final where the Sharkies got up is still one of the best days of my whole life. Best day of your life, Obviously, yeah. besides my wedding and childbirth, Talitha. <laughs> so, uh, so was that coming like fourth? But uh, yeah, I was out there at Homebush that day when the big gal hosted the trophy. When the uh, turn the porch light off was yeah. uh, an amazing day. So no, Sharkies fan, till the day I die, or they get relocated. <laughs> Oh, have you heard something there? <laughs> oh, that's a great part of the world, though. I'd hate to see a football team dragged out of there, but that's just me. When, when it comes to the fitness industry, you, you've led the way with it, like events. Like you turn the fitness industry into what everyone makes money off now, running events in the fitness industry. It wasn't yeah. happening in the early days. I've been in it 20 years. It, it wasn't there. You've done some cool things like the nightclub spin. Is that worded correctly? Yeah, yeah. Nightclub, nightclub spin, yeah. spin, yeah. Sofa to surf. 30 days clean. Like you, you were pioneering all these mm. things that we're all jumped on the back of. So yeah, probably the the best one to date. So flow after dark. So mm. yoga, silent disco. So we had 900 people at the Horden Pavilion doing a yoga people. class with the headphones on with the DJ. So Kate Kendall leading it, DJ James Mack on the uh, on the wheels of steel. And it was just an amazing event. How that actually came to me, I was having a, a float in a float tank, sensory deprivation tank, something like to do and boom it just hit me like a bolt of lightning and I nearly put my head through the roof of it <laughs> was that we should really because what we'd done the little ones in our studio and I thought hey let's do larger scale events so and then from there we've sold out the Horden we've sold out Melbourne Town Hall we've sold out events in in Gold Coast in Brisbane so for me like it's great that they they make money for the business but it's just really again I bring it back to camaraderie it's great team building for the the employees of, of Fly Athletic that we all a dozen of us fly up to Brisbane to do a fly after dark and some of us are on stage and some of them are behind the scenes and we just have a, a good fun a good good fun and we bring something to a group of people that have never experienced something like that before so. and mate when you were, when you're having your visions were, were you thinking gee 900 people are going to turn up for this uh, that's pretty unique yeah it's it's pretty pretty amazing I mean the Horden is an amazing event look I remember going to concerts there when I was young and I never foresaw that it you know 20 years later I would be selling out that venue space to do a yoga class yeah exactly yeah. even bringing the DJs and that into it too that was something that is in every gym and every you go to any F45 or any gym these yeah. days that's what I mean you were really leading the way back then yeah yeah and, and look and, and that's okay and we'll, we'll keep pushing the envelope with what's next and yeah. I don't know what that is but I back myself and our business and self to find out what that is. The good thing, it's coming from a place of how can we serve the community? How can we do something for our cool from our team? And yeah, well, I know we can make it happen, you know. Yeah, nice. And Matt, you're probably not going to talk about this, but you have won a Telstra Small Business of Year Award, which is not something that's given away yeah. easily. Do the accolades yeah. interest you? Like, is it something that is a driver for you and your team or is it something you've you've fallen into? Uh, that, that was a... Yeah, that was one of the few times of my life that I've been truly shocked. So we made it through, you know, the finals and then we made it to the big, big awards ceremony and like of the, and it wasn't just the fitness industry, it was across Absolutely, every industry. Yeah, yeah. And it was tech business this, tech business that, tech business yeah. this, and Flow Athletic a gym. And we thought, we're just here for diversity. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, so I actually didn't have a speech written because I thought we were at thousands. But uh, yeah, when I read when they read out that name, I was I was truly truly shocked. So look, it it's nice it's to get acknowledged as a fitness business as as just a business person entirely, mm. not just a fitness business. So that was an amazing achievement for for the the team for myself yeah definitely not why you do it you you do it to to help you know change people's lives twofold your customers and the people that work for you too help them live better lives so. nice and mate speaking of better lives i mean obviously one of the big successes to any business is good people around you yeah how how did how did you and kate make that decision to i know you talked about how you met and what you did together mm. what was it that made you think that you should get into business together like what was that overriding for these young people out there that want to have a 
crack, and there's a lot of young innovators in Australia, sure. which is great. And what was that driver for you? Yeah, so Kate had just I, – I'd, I'd owned three smaller gyms at that time. Kate had just gotten back from a international Lulu Lemon Conference in Whistler. Uh, she came Tough back gig. and uh, <laughs> she said to me, Benny, I really want to open a yoga studio. I went, awesome, great, I'll help you out doing it. She goes, no, I want to, want to do it with you. And I went, all right. <laughs> Okay, and then I said, well, I only do it if we incorporate fitness in it as well, and then that's the story uh, of flow. Uh, but, yeah, we really dug – like, you can have a great idea for a business. You could really care about people, but your business could still go belly up, and fitness is so, so competitive yeah. these days. So, you know, I, I don't come from a business background, but now I love it. It's almost like my sport now and just getting detailed into your into your business plan into your you know your point of difference from your business into your marketing plan into your financials into your cash flow into your bang 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 you've got to be so detailed across the board into how you run your business because it's too competitive these days you're going to get swallowed up so i think yes passion for the industry yes having a, a product that stands out but you also must go dig deep into how how you're going to run your business as a successful business. Mate, you, you touched a good point there, having a, a, like a point of difference and something that stands out. When you guys were talking about putting a yoga studio with fitness, did you have a lot of headbutting there as to go, Ben, how many knocks did you take taking yeah. that ball up? Like <laughs> seriously, because if you were to like use a traditional avatar model, mm. you know, where you said an avatar, you wouldn't have fitness people and yoga people no. in the same avatar. Or you, today you would because you've created that. But yeah. back then. No, and and – we kind of wanted a, you know, b back then, again, it's funny, that it wasn't that long ago, but people forget how different the industry was then. It there was so quickly. There was big box, fitness first, pretty yep. much only fitness first then. And then there were 24 hour and that was it. Mm. There was no boutique fitness, didn't exist in 2010, 11, 12, you know, but now you can't even throw a rock without hitting yeah, exactly. gyms. Yeah, exactly. Which is which is good, which is fine. So we wanted a play. So Kate really and I really believe in yoga. You should be doing that. We really believe that you should be doing strength training, and you really need to be doing cardiovascular work. So we really believe you should be doing all three of those things every week. So you come up the stairs as a potential client. Well, if we didn't offer, if we only offered yoga, if we only offered yoga and strength, if we only offered yoga and cardio, I would be sending you elsewhere yep. to get what I believe you should be doing because I'm not going to lie to you. So that's why we wanted to have an offering that had the ability to do yoga, strength and cardio because we have the belief of that's what people should be doing. So that was where that kind of came from is that I wanted to have a business offering that was able to cater for the public in everything we believe they should be doing for their health and for their body. Mate, it's a pretty amazing story. It's, it's crazy what you've done. Yeah. So mate, you spend a lot of time traveling overseas looking at trends and what's happening in the world. Like is that a big part of you as an entrepreneur in the fitness industry these days? A hundred percent. I remember uh, and some of my best times came even from in my when I first started personal training in my 20s a long time ago now <laughs> I would travel, you know, have to wait for a sale to get an economy seat at the back of the bus and pretty much stay in hostels and go to workshops or seminars or conferences and train at the gyms over there. And I used to love it and made some good friends that I've got now and learned plenty of different things. But and people don't realise that was b before social media <coughs> and things like that as well. It mustn't have happened then. You know? <laughs> <laughs> But the difference between, you know, Australia and the US in fitness now is is inches as opposed to kilometers as Absolutely. it was back then because we can see what everyone's doing every single day on, on social. But, you know, when you go to Equinox, Soul Cycle, Rumble, things like that, you had to be there and see that to really experience it. But now you can just flick your Instagram on to get a good idea. Yeah. Obviously it's much better to go there yourself. But yeah, so I've but I'm a bit of a nut when I go there I don't just it's not about the class 
plus for me or the service it's about what's their reception like what's their bathrooms like what are the lightings like what is the towels are they using what's what does it smell like what are that exactly that and i would take pages and pages and pages of notes of what's their booking system like what's their you know doormat like at the front all of that because that that is the experience it's not just the class Mm -hmm. it's the what what's their website like what's the booking experience like how was i greeted on the way in what's their bathrooms like etc 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 because that's that's your service your service isn't just the 45 minute class they do it's about how do you find them online it's about how do you book that class it's about how i was welcomed in it's about that end-to-end service so that's what whenever i go to a place i take pages of notes and not all of that page for you know not probably the least bit is actually on what the class was (laughs) it's about everything else so it's funny you say that because i run product development here and because we make everything from therapeutics to drinks to tablets to powders to bars it's impossible to do it in-house we often when we're looking at new technologies the first place i go is the toilet yeah because I just want to see how they treat their toilet because if the toilet has that 1% on it, I know that their whole process and business will have that. Yeah. And I know that sounds pretty silly, but that's one of my big drivers as to how I pick a manufacturer. For sure. Is just, it's those behind the door, it's the little 1% things that make those massive differences. And it's interesting you say that that's, that's what's built your process around your change and you're dictating what we do here in Australia now. It's, you know, I commend that. And, and that's why, even though, you know, we've been going for seven years now, I'm still obsessed every single day about the thousand ways we can be better and mm-hmm. someone can come to flow and do a class and go geez Benny that was awesome and I go yeah but what about bang 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 and I am hypercritical because I know we can be be better why do I want to be better because I, I want us to be the best fitness service on the, the planet is that possible why the fuck not Someone's exactly be, you know, absolutely so. mate Nathan's exactly the same my business partner for those people who don't know he's the same he is always what can we do better what can we do better Yeah, it's almost to the point where I'm going to create a t-shirt brand for him <laughs> just so I go here's a t-shirt so it tells you what you can do better <laughs> he's one of those guys you're also bringing America to Australia right here is that right you're bringing some the fitness yeah, industry yeah yeah so I'm taking a tour in March I'm taking uh, 24 Aussies over to the States just yep. to kind of experience so I try to go to the States twice a year I go to LA in New York on different trips try not to be as way uh, as long these days so I've got my little bubbers at home but just to experience all those high end gyms and I've made some great connections over there so they can kind of have a look behind the kimono and actually see how they're run and hear some stories about who how these people have founded their businesses and their challenges along the way and things like that so yeah j- just a, a good group in, in March Fit Trip LA 2020 yeah so I've, can I've, anyone can talk to you about coming yeah, back yeah yeah how, how do they get on board uh yeah they, they can just message me or, or just head to the fly athletic website uh fit trip 2020 and, and funnily enough half the people i think i've sold 20 of the 24 spots are fitness business owners that yep. are really keen on growing their fitness business and the other half are just everyday people that just want to get away and have a good train and relax too so yeah mate what i love with you're doing in the fitness industry is you're you're working together with other people in it because we can grow the industry instead of our own business i think that's an amazing amazing thing too many people have their own priorities and it, it doesn't work for the, the world of fitness you know i mean we need to work together more and well again i mean i don't know what the stat is but you know it's growing but it's still only 20 percent of people exercise regularly mm. you know so it still leaves 80 percent. so we're not fighting against each other we're fighting against the people that aren't exercising so we should be really working as a team to yeah. combat obesity and unhealthiness as opposed to trying to fight over that 20 percent oh increase the voice mate i agree so your 40th marathon is there a 41 in the in the book uh so i went it to sounds s- like you got a lot of spare time <laughs> <laughs> I went and saw just after my 40th marathon, so around my 40th marathon, the New York Marathon, with 50 people from Flow Athletic last year in November. That was also an amazing, incredible day, and we raised a lot of money for Team for Kids charity. But I went and saw a doctor, and he just gave me just a, a check over, and he had a look at my feet and ankles. I've played a lot of rugby league, a lot of basketball, a lot of running, and I've got arthritis in both my ankles and both my feet. Uh, and he said to me to buy by a kayak. Ah, so, let's, let's get the shoulders wrecked. So, so <laughs> in other words, don't don't run anymore. So I've got marathon. I've got a. <laughs> 
though I ran the city to surf with my three-year-old son nice a couple of weeks ago and we just had the best time yeah and my, my ankles didn't hurt for that day so when I wake up I go down the stairs like like tin man uh, but I wouldn't take back anything that I've done yep. today I just might have to be a bit more selective about uh, my challenges in the future <laughs> do you do you now that you know a lot more about yoga and you've got some other businesses that do some pretty cool stuff and fitness do you wish you'd spent more time on mobility and things like that earlier in your NRL career because back when you were playing was, as you said it was it, it's a different game to what it is now as far as support teams go and yeah. networks around players maybe we and then Cronulla you know we had awesome strength and fitness coach Paul Watson who was quite progressive okay. back then but it was still more so you know uh, 400 repeats and sand hills and weights yep. you know and, and that's just what it what it looked like and recovery just wasn't a thing mm. really and you know I look back oh and you know getting knocked out brought to the sidelines smelling salts <laughs> and straight back on how good was that oh, wow yeah, there's a movie about that now <laughs> <laughs> so yeah things have definitely changed for the better yeah definitely i'm so big on recovery now infrared saunas float tanks yoga things like that i mean oh it wouldn't have helped me extend my career at all because i was a 98 kilo prop i think about another 20 kilos of muscle that's the only thing that would have <laughs> helped me extend my career but uh yeah no i'm so big on the whole recovery scene i think it's incredible and it's only going to get more so you mentioned float tanks a couple of times yeah i was was in a business that was was recovery was float tanks and infrared saunas yeah so yeah it's just, it's just something that i i really believe for 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 everyone just to help with your sleep help with your stress help with your exercise yeah crazy like you've done you've you've definitely done a lot more fitness than most of us will ever be able to do so mate what what's next for you i mean that's a big question to ask obviously you let's be honest you're not doing enough at the moment so we should ask what's next trying to be the best husband and father i can be that's the i love it the number one priority yeah. and, and then outside of that yeah j j just i still haven't got to the stage and i guess i'm like pico where i walk away from the business and go we're a 10 out of 10 you know and and i still think we're better than 99 percent out of there and i still think we're a six yeah. so i know i can be a better leader for my team so they can lead better lives i know we can give a better service to our clients so they can be happier so that's what i'm truly passionate about is 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 helping my team and my clients live the best lives they can and I, no matter how good we get i still think we'll be a six out of ten so i wake up <laughs> each morning with fire in the belly to get that done and yeah and just just being i got a three-year-old son oliver and a seven-month-old daughter uh riley and just just trying to it's the juggle since the beginning of time is just how do you be as good as dad as you can and uh, a good a uh, business person as you can too so making that all work mate that's amazing mate i just want to say thanks for coming in i think it's really good to have these chats with people that have truly changed the industry you know we talk to a lot of experts and people who are very niche in what they do and but it's great to talk to someone who's got vision not saying the other people on here haven't i'm just saying you've you've definitely like nathan's a hard person to impress my, my partner yeah. nathan he talks about you all the time yeah right. <laughs> like he just has the utmost respect for what you've done in the industry and he's a brand man he's all about the brand and the, and the journey with, with the brand he just goes you just you've just created magic that the whole industry has grown from you know and i just think my big thing is just just re a really caring really caring about the service you're giving to your clients and then really caring about looking after your team and the the money will come and the business will come and i think a lot of people got it pear-shaped where it's about the money first and then and then the business and then your staff but i i i don't believe that and fortunately enough i've had the success i have to date and hopefully will continue where you put your your clients and your team first and then the it works out for your business as well there you go people you heard if you want to start up clients and team first i'm a man who knows how to do it mate you've raised money you've changed the industry you've made a lot of people happy you've created something that we're all benefiting from i just want to say a big thank you from the fitness industry for coming in uh, and appreciate I, it mate i love body science so thank you so much <laughs> <laughs>
Boom. Today's podcast was brought to you by our partners in Fit, Happy and Healthy, ASN, Nutrition Warehouse, DY Discount Vitamins, Fat Burners Only, Evelyn Fay, Mr. Supplement, or find a retailer online at bodyscience.com.au forward slash retailers.